Hi, this is Mike Hendrickson from Strata Santa Clara in San Francisco, Santa Clara area. I'm here with JC Raveno. JC, how are you doing? I'm doing good, thank you. Thanks for having me. Sure, so you're the Senior Business BI Director at SAP? Yes. And SAP has been around for 40 some years and your BI has been around for 25 like plus years. Mm -hmm. uh, mostly involved in enterprise organizations. Um, but lately you've been getting some accolades from the industry about your efforts. What, what's going on there with, with you, you guys in BI? Yeah, absolutely, thanks for asking the question. And by the way, uh, we just had a, a very good uh, review of our mobile BI um, uh, application. Mobile BI. mobile BI application by Howard Resner with them the crowd. So, so what would I use mobile BI on an iPad or? Well, on an iPad, on, a, on an iPhone, iPhone. on um, Android? Uh, Android devices as well. Nice. Uh, so it's very good. So I think it's really a uh, validation of the, the strategy that we have around the analytics altogether um, yeah. and the execution of the strategy, obviously, right? Um, so in the past, we had this idea of um, it has to be the single version of the truth right it has to be a data warehouse yep. and so on and so forth right we all know the story um, but if you look at it it only addressed um, a very small percentage of the data right um, people are saying that 90 percent of the data was untapped at this time we at sap call it dark data data okay. that people didn't have access to right and that you know has value right then you had a an emerging trend, which was the self-service, right? How do I start leveraging those data in a self-service fashion? And you started to see emerging those kind of point solutions for the analyst kind of profile. Kind right? of federating. Uh, the they were kind of tapping into this yep. untapped data. But for us, it was like, okay, well, there is a problem to this because now you're creating silos. Federation of data, right. You're creating silos. So the old strategy that we built uh, is called the collective insight strategy for the analytics. And basically what we do is we bring everything together. We have our BI platform, which is SAP Business Objects BI4, right? Um, we have the HANA platform, which gives us the real-time capabilities. And on top of this, we are building um, you know, a, an ecosystem of solutions that include something that we call the agile visualization, yep. which is this kind of self-service uh, discovery right. uh, thing that we were talking about. And we're adding to this the predictive capabilities on top of this, right? Everything is kind of fits together as an ecosystem, a platform for analytic capabilities. And all this content is shared and made available to the users on the mobile devices, on the desktop, in the cloud, um, we have collaboration capabilities thanks to integration with Jam and so on and so forth. So I think this is really a, a very um, uh, coherent strategy uh, that comes together and we're delivering on it actually right now. So part of your coherent strategy though is this new, it, somewhat new uh, HANA platform. Mm -hmm. Can you unpack a little bit about what HANA is more than just it's a platform for managing real-time data? What, what actually is Hana. Yes, very good question, thanks. Um, so HANA started as a uh, in-memory uh, columnar database, right? right. Uh, and we quickly, we quickly saw the opportunity to make it more than that uh, and to make it a platform. So what we did here is we added a lot of uh, capabilities um, that are closer to the data, right? So at the time, you used to have like this kind of dumb database, right? That was a storage place, right? Yep. What you have with HANA is we added some geospatial capabilities, some text analytics capabilities, some predictive capabilities, some other capabilities that we added to make it a platform. So we can now work on the data at the location of the data the most efficiently possible. So we're creating the platform. Then we started to wrap this um, into more platform-ish um, capabilities like you know um, provisioning users, uh, having HANA in the cloud, um, developing applications directly on HANA. So we have this now with this you know real what we call the real-time platform that is capable of processing um, any kind of data really um, and uh, really simplifying. I think this is a key word here: simplifying the entire stack. 
So we can collapse the entire stack into HANA and, and really make this, this kind of beautiful systems with some analytics that sits on the top. Um, very simple, uh, very efficient. So one of the theme themes that I've been hearing more and more at this conference is we're, we're hearing people talk about the Internet of Things, mm -hmm. the industrial internet, machine to machine, all the different internet of everything. There's, right. there's a ton of words to describe right. what's going on there in the machine to machine world or machine to person world or uh, you know our physical world connecting with our software world, that sort of thing. Absolutely. So a lot of the data that's generated there though is kind of unstructured or, or you know it's hard to ingest. Will HANA be able to uh, identify and, and and normalize that data or make it work for you? Yeah, so, so there are two things that are very interested with uh, very interesting. Sorry, with uh, machine generated data, right? Um, a good thing, uh, data is actually pretty clean, right? Because it's machine generated and uh, machine don't make mistake, right? I'm not going to miss some, you know, a digit to the IP right, address or whatever. Right, for a zero. E yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So that's a great part of it. Now, machine means also a big variety of the data, a high velo velocity of the data, and obviously volume of the data as well. So the four Vs that we recognize as being part of the big data, right? Um, what you need is you need capacities to process this data very quickly in order to make sense of it. So there is also this notion of the value is, time, time is of the essence really, right? The value is in uh, the data that's coming in right now and the value is going to be lost if I kind of wait for even hours of, or days uh, to use them. So the advantage of having a real-time platform like HANA is we can ingest uh, this, uh, this stream of data really um, and aggregate this, you know, there is some uh, federation engine as well in HANA and you can aggregate this and quickly make sense of it and surface some dashboards or surface some actions to the user. The only, the, the other interesting things uh, that I see emerging with, uh, with uh, machine data and big data in general is before um, we were in a world where we could, as a human being, uh, consume the data pretty easily through visualizations and dashboard, right? It's becoming a lot more challenging with big data. So uh, what I see is two different trends here. One is we have to make software that is capable of aggregating the data in a fashion that makes it consumable by, by a human being. Right. Right. So, right. Um, capabilities like predictive analytics um, or any kind of aggregation capability is going to be very important in the future. That's one. The second thing is we're going to see emerging more what I call analytical applications. So, machine data being processed by machines and action taken by, machine, by machines to surface something to the user. Uh, for example, a good use case of this is uh, real-time uh, offer management. Right, that we yep. see a lot. So those, those two things are, I believe, the big trends uh, for the future. So can we, I, I want to kind of unpack the word real time. Um, I remember 20-some uh, years ago working with P.J. Plowger who uh, wrote a book uh, with Brian Kernahan and his, his term for real time meant anything that had a time component to it because it, it could be that your time component is every two days it strikes on that exact mm -hmm. moment. Mm -hmm. And that's a real-time system mm -hmm. because it had a timing component that had to be precise and on right. time. So what is the current definition of real-time that we're all using with data now? Is it yeah. like instantaneous data? Is there another word that we should be using here than, than maybe real-time? Th that's, that's a good question. I mean, real-time can be many things. The way I, I understand real-time and the way we want to work with it is really around um, be able to do something with the data by the time, at the very time it comes from the transactional system. So a transaction happens, at, for example, at the point of sale. Right. And what you want to do is immediately analyze this data in order to do something with it and kind of engage to your recommend engage uh, your buyer uh, or anything yeah. like that. Right. Yeah. We have a, a very um, a very good use case that we talk about in the gaming industry, where you know um, where your ship gets bombed or destroyed then we can push a real-time offer 
to the user, hey, you know, buy, buy another new, life, buy an, another life yeah, for yeah, like yeah. you know two dollars or what have you. So those are really the, the real time use case okay. we're talking about when we talk about Hana and the real time platform. Okay, and so. Can I ask you, what industries are you seeing that are most interested in moving from uh, maybe a data warehousing BI culture to more of a real-time data analytics platform in the SAP world? Well, it's it's basically cross the board. I it mean, is. I, yeah, I, I couldn't, I couldn't, yeah, I couldn't pick one industry. I mean, we see this, you know, uh, healthcare is very uh, is very interested. Automotive. I mean, Sorry? Automotive. The Automotive is very, I mean, obviously everything around marketing and sales is huge. Um, uh, finance as well. I mean, we help customers. They were closing their books in like a couple of weeks, close their books in days, uh, even, you know, smaller than a day, right? Which is a huge gain for them, right? Huge value. Um, in the uh, healthcare research, I mean, we, we enable um, cancer uh, patients to get the treatment faster. So it's kind of life-saving use case that we're talking about here. So pretty much across the board. Okay, so this last question I have for you, and I don't, it wasn't on any predetermined question list or anything, but so um, if there was one problem in the world that data could solve, what would you choose to aim that data at to solve? What, what problem would it be for you personally, not for SAP, yeah. but for you? For me personally, yeah. that would be the healthcare problem, right? Okay. Being able to deliver good healthcare to the entire population on the planet. Um, I think you know there is huge discrepancies between uh, the health of people around here, and I think we have the mean with the data to be more efficient with the resources we have. Oh, so yeah. it means that it would not cost us more to be to be able to provide better health, for better everyone. health to pretty much everyone on the planet. Yes, that's a great so, mission. Yep. Yep. JC, thank you for your hey, time. We'll thank look forward you. to seeing what you and SAP do. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thanks. Great.